is we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Innovation Diploma Program. And then uh, we'll let some of the kids tell you about their experiences. And then you guys are going to head to PE in a little bit. And parents, if you'll stick around, we'll talk to you a little bit and answer a few questions. Does that sound good? All right. Hey, everybody. My name is Emily Wilcox. Some of you guys know me as Coach Wilcox. My students call me Wilcox. Whatever you want to call me, we're really excited to be here today. Um, in Innovation Diploma, we believe in starting with stories. So that's what we're going to do today. If you'll look up at the screen, you're gonna see a photo of one of our wonderful alum. Her name is Mary Fuentes. You can even wave at her if you wanna make it weird, which we love. Um, Mary was an innovation diploma, now she's at UGA, and she was able to do a lot of really amazing stuff in her four years in ID. Mary got to work with Mercedes-Benz. She got to lead a team in designing for what she thought the future of food might be and the future of retail might be. She got to help launch a nonprofit that helps teens and children with special needs start their own jewelry company. She got to completely revamp the social media for a couple different platforms. Um, she did a lot of cool stuff, like I said. She fell in love with social media marketing and business, and that's actually what she's studying now at UGA. Stories like Mary make us really excited to talk to you guys about ID because it's a great picture of what's possible when you buy into the program. And uh, you may be looking at Mary and thinking, but I can't do that, and I can't stand in front of those people. And let me tell you, when Mary Sauer, you sat, she also wasn't able to do those things. She was kind of a quiet, shy freshman. Um, but by the time we graduate, one thing we always say about ID students, they can talk to anyone, anytime, anywhere. And we're going to show you a little bit about, more about that. I forgot I had the clicker for a minute. Um, so that's starting with the story. That was Mary's story. And we've got a lot of incredible students with a lot of different stories. But we want to speak about our core values that we have as a program. Our first core value is that we value collaboration over individual achievement. We believe that working together makes us stronger always. Our next core value is multidisciplinary learning over specialization. We like to do really cool stuff with our classes. Science works with art. Art works with humanities, humanities works with science, everything works with maker. We believe incredible things can happen when the disciplines work together. It's also a lot of fun too. Next, we believe that trial and error is more important than risk avoidance. And by that we mean we want our students to jump in, make mistakes, and be activated to try new things instead of not doing something just because you think you might fail. Um, we used to say fail up here at Mount Vernon. I still say fail up. Um, and in ID, we really believe in failing early and failing often to get to the really good stuff. Next, we value creating over consuming. We want to be people who make more than we take and put a lot of good out into the world. Finally, we believe in play, passion, and purpose over extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation means that you're motivated by things outside of yourself, like grades, what people might think of you, what expectations your parents, teachers, friends might have of you. And we believe in playing and having fun and being passionate about stuff and discovering new things over extrinsic motivation. A lot of times people come to us and they say, okay, that's cool, you value this, you value that, there's Mary's story, whatever, who are you looking for? Who's the perfect ID student? What kind of person are you looking for? Raise your hand if you've thought that ever. Who are you looking for? Who that's are you doing a, this for? It's a big parent question, too. What it kind of kid question. are you looking for? Cool, I see a few brave hands, and I bet a lot more of you guys thought that, too. Um, we're not looking for one type of student. We've got a lot of different kinds of students in ID. We've got kids who do theater. We've got kids who play sports. We've got prefects. We've got really quiet kids who just are like, leave me alone, I want to read a book. We have them all, okay? But the four qualities we're really looking for in students are insatiably curious, and that means that you're curious, you can't get enough, you love to learn. Next is profoundly optimistic. That means you're someone who believes that you can change the world, that there's good in the world, um, and that people are good. Next is the deeply empathetic. You care a lot about other people. You want people to be happy, you want people to feel safe, you care about them, you wanna do things for them. And finally, our students are biased towards action. That's like when we talked about we value trial and error over risk avoidance. We want our students to be able to just jump right in, try new things, make mistakes, get messy, solve problems. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Above everything, and if you take one thing away from today, it's that we value relationships. We believe that relationships are foundational to everything we do in ID. The secret sauce of ID and what makes us so special, in my opinion, is the relationship that we, the teachers, get to have with our students and the students get to have with each other. There's a lot of trust there uh, and a lot of really great stuff comes from it. We give really tough feedback, right guys? ID yeah. students, yeah. We're not afraid to look at an ID kid and be like, hey man, that is garbage. 
because we love them, because they trust us. And that's why our work looks so great. So now that we've talked about who we are and what we value, um, Ms. Fancher is gonna talk to you a little bit about logistics and some of the nitty gritty stuff of the program. Thank you, I'm Krista Fancher. Most students call me Fancher or Fanch. Um, and what Wilcox said about our relationships is so true, and I think the students will touch on that a little bit, but you could think of it almost more like a sports team that's together for the whole four years. So by the time you're these guys age, we can just look at some of your work and say, mm -mm, mm -mm, and they know exactly. Or like I talked to some freshmen yesterday and I said, hey, swing and a miss, not the work, the level we do, because we don't really do school project projects, we do real world, high scale, professional looking stuff. And that takes a few tries and misses. So you're probably wondering a lot about what classes will I take? What is this program like? So the program has grown over 10 years. This is our 10th anniversary, which is a big deal for us. You will start, you will hear if you haven't already, that a lot of schools are trying to do programs like this, innovative programs, work with partners programs. We've been at this for 10 years and we started with a very tiny group of kids 10 years ago who took this as an elective. But now it is a four year school within a school program, okay? So we have about 30% of the upper school and uh, it, growing all the time. Our biggest cohort I think is uh, 48 students, our smallest is 34, and when we say cohort, that's a grade level group. So we have four cohorts, which you'll hear in a minute. We have a ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade cohort. The ninth and 10th grade years, which is what you care about the most, I'm sure, is what we call onboarding. And during that time, we are going to teach you about the values and the expectations of the program these older kids are gonna pass down their culture to you. We always say our culture is one cohort away from being lost, so we wanna make sure it's passed down through each group of kids so that when you're a junior or senior, you'll have the pride and you'll know the culture well enough where you're like, I wanna go talk to those eighth graders. I wanna know what this is about. So now, let's get into what your classes will look like. One of the first questions I get from students is, if I'm an ID, Will I ever see my friends again who aren't in ID? And the answer is yes. So we're gonna have your schedule in ninth and 10th grade for a few things. If you'll look, you'll see you'll always take Humanities 9 and Humanities 10 in ID. And we're gonna let the Humanities teachers tell you a little bit later about how that's different than a non-ID class. So we'll have you for chemistry and biology. And in ID, we do chemistry first and biology second. And there's a reason for that. We just find in the work we do, chemistry comes up a lot. And since we've switched the order of those two, it's had a big payoff and we really value that kids come in to 10th grade already having chemistry. Um, you're going to take your maker classes with your ID group. And then the other classes, your math, your foreign language, your advisory group, which is like your homeroom, I think you guys have that too, right? Those kids are not an ID or there'll be a mixture of ID and non-ID kids. So you will get to see your friends who aren't an ID as well during that. And we'll go through these courses a little bit more in a minute, but that's the basic idea. So remember, humanities, science, and maker for ninth and 10th grade. And then we have some arts, we're gonna teach you the art part of project management that you need to know to make a really great project and put it out into the world. All right. So now our humanities teachers are gonna come talk to you guys a little bit about what makes Innovation Diploma Humanities different. Hi everyone. Uh, good to have you all here. Um, my name is Miss Ammons. This is Mr. Hewitt. We teach ID Humanities um, and I'm here to talk to you because I also teach non-ID Humanities. So. Um, let me tell you a little bit about some of the differences, and they really lie in the core tenets of ID. We talked about collaboration. We talked about kind of having that intrinsic or built-in motivation to do something that you're passionate about and not really relying on sort of outward factors like grades and what people think of this and that kind of thing as our motivator. So in my non-ID humanities class, 
We still do awesome work. We specialize a little bit more. We talk a little bit more about history. We talk about, uh, we read novels and we analyze and we kind of dive deep into some of that stuff. And if you love that kind of content, it's a great, <coughs> great place to be. We have discussions, we have all of these things, and we do collaborative work. I would say uh, my non-ID humanities students do collaborative work every other week. And in our ID classes, our ID humanities, we do collaborative work every day. Um, so it's a little bit of a different balance, um, but for example, uh, in my non-ID humanities class right now, we're working on a project where part of it is individual, and then together we kind of come and have a discussion. Um, I'm gonna let Mr. Hewitt talk about what he's doing in his ninth grade um, ID humanities class so you can kind of see uh, the differences. So during this mod, we've been working on a class called Writing for the World, and you'll hear from some, some of the freshmen. We don't do a lot of writing, but what we do is podcasting. And you can go find our podcast, Getting Into Good Trouble, anywhere you can find podcasts. So that's gonna be the big difference is we're doing things that are outward facing, we want everyone to hear what we're doing, not just our classmates or our teachers. And I think if you're interested in that type of work, especially being able to work in a group with people and being able to tell your group members, here's what I need you to do, and being able to tell them, that's great, let's move on, or that's not good enough, we need to work together to do better. Uh, that's the type of work we're looking to do in the, the ID program versus the regular humanities courses. Um. Just to kind of piggyback on, on what Mr. Hewitt was saying, um, a lot of what we do in our ID humanities classes are, is very, very student driven. So there's a lot of ambiguity or um, left open to creativity-ness. Uh, and so if you prefer to have a teacher tell you this is exactly what you need to do to do, produce this kind of work, you might prefer a non-ID humanities class. But if you are open to a kind of, like Ms. Wilcox was saying, be brave and try things even if they might not work out, um, ID humanities might be a better path for you. Um, do you want to hear from some of the ninth grade students working on this podcast that Mr. Hewitt was talking about? Yeah. All right. Um, Allie, you want to talk first? Sure, should I talk about the podcasts? Or? You can if you want, yeah. Okay, so back last year when I was like y'all, like deciding whether I should do ID or not, as Vance was saying, like I was super worried about not seeing my non-ID friends, but I was so wrong to worry about that because over like 50% of our classes are non-ID, so you get to see like your whole grade. So you don't have to worry about not only seeing your cohort and also talking about the podcast we were making. So I've made two podcasts this mod. I've made one about um, the anti-Bitcoin protests and it's really interesting because like you are kind of like you get to choose what you want to make it on so you're not like told like this is what you have to do and it's really cool because you get to pick experts and you just get to make it on your own and it's really cool and you get to learn a lot of great skills. So I really enjoy it. So yeah, Johnny, do you want to talk about some stuff? Yeah, should I talk? Um, yeah, I'm Johnny. Um, I'm a member of the Jorgen cohort in ninth grade. Um, I'd say probably my favorite part about ID is how intentional the work is and how real it is. Like the work that we do in Mr. Hewitt's class is actually put out into the world on Spotify or just wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, and the work that we do in humanities, it's, it gives you an opportunity to create something that's actually out in the world. So, yeah. Um, I put them on the spot just now to talk about the podcast. Um, and we are going to hear from them again later when we talk about ID science. Um, so I kind of went out of order a little bit, and you guys did great. See, look, there, you, there they go. Jalen, is there anything you want to add? Oh, um, okay. So with podcasting, um, this class has definitely taught me um, the first, I think it's a key thing when explaining like um, what ID wants from their students, and that's like empathy, because this was the first time that I had really not only just addressed the issue that happened outside of this country, but be able to like research and interview experts in a way that I can talk about it and like analyze the different issues that are in the topic. And so that's the biggest thing with ID, like you have to learn how to put yourself in all kinds of different perspectives and see what life is like for different people in order for you to really figure out, oh, what is like the best solution to this problem? And podcasting has helped me a lot with that. So hello, everybody. 
I am Alan Harris, or Mr. Harris, or Coach Al, and I am an alumni of Mount Vernon. So I went to school in this building that you guys are in right now. So it's, it's always so nice to be back. Uh, but I teach all the innovation diploma sciences. Um, and the biggest thing, the difference between innovation diploma sciences and the regular sciences is that we do real work. We work with real experts and do real things that are going to impact our world. Um, the freshmen, they did uh, natural products chemistry where they're fighting antibiotic resistance and talking with the director of Emory Antibiotic Resistance Center to, to uh, find ways to combat antibiotic resistance and stuff. So it's really, really cool what we get to do. Um, and yeah, it's awesome. We're going to have a good time. Trip or anybody want to talk about the ID sciences? What you've experienced? Okay, here you go, Allie. Okay, so in, sorry, that was really loud, <laughs> but in chemistry, we um, were learning how to like fight Staphylococcus aureus epidermis, which is a really long name, but it's basically like a staph <laughs> infection. And so we had to do all this research to find like plants that would like combat it successfully. And we got to go to like a supermarket and like choose the plants. And then we had to learn how to extract the phytochemicals, which are the thing that like fight the staph. <laughs> and it was really cool because we got to like do it all on our own. And unfortunately my group failed, but other ones were successful. <laughs> Both the science you fail. Yeah, right? but you gotta <laughs> fail to learn. So it's okay, but yeah. <laughs> So, so I'm actually a sophomore, um, and so sophomore year, what we're doing now is I'm actually in, what am I in? I'm in biology right now, <laughs> and so in biology, we're doing uh, this YDC challenge, which is the Youth Design Challenge, and what we're doing is we're finding a real-world uh, problem in the SDGs, which is the Sustainable Development Goals um, and what we're doing is we're finding a problem or a solution to fight them. So our goal is uh, goal 11, and so that is creating sustainable cities. And so we have to find a biomimicry solution. So what biomimicry is, is it's machines or things that were designed off of animals. For instance, how ships and submarines use echolocation, and echolocation is from whales and orcas, and they use it to communicate. Um, and sonar, and what it does is it bounces off its sound waves and it bounces off other objects in the ocean and it determines the location of objects. So that's what we're doing. And the thing about ideas, all the classes really, it's a lot of, it's a lot of collaborative work. So what we're doing is our class is split into two groups and we're actually in a competition with each other. You see, you can get the best and we actually have to make a video or a pitch as we call it and we submit it into the youth design challenge and hopefully we can win. And the thing about ID is when you're in these pitches, it teaches you real life skills. Like it teaches you how to talk in front of the camera, talk in front of the microphone, kind of like we're all doing now. It gives, you, um, it gives you like skills that you can use later. And then going back to humanities, like in humanities this year, we did debate classes and we were in a debate class and we had to, it's solo, so it's kind of scary because we had to go up in front of the class and debate against somebody else. And you know, you all want to win. So when you lose, it, it, it's also competitive. ID is, I feel like ID is competitive sometimes, like in your own class, so it gives you, it, it can be very fun. And then um, with the groups as well, we also did a group debate. So it teaches you real life skills. And I can say when I was y'all's age, um, I remember when I first heard of ID, like I wanted nothing to do with it. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I submitted like my ID pitch until like five days before it was due. And they gave us like two months. And then when I first got into ID, I was still kind of skeptical. Like I was telling my mom, like, can I switch out? Because I remember the first week, it was a lot of explaining. And I'm like, what is this? I, I don't want to do any of this. But um, now later on, looking back at it, I really can't imagine myself not doing ID because I really like it. And I like the people here. And I like the, the work that we do. So yeah. Yeah, they just made me so happy because <laughs> <laughs> they remember everything that we're learning. Um, and that's another big part, is if you're actually doing the work, you're going to remember it a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, that's the ID Sciences. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the newest addition to Innovation Diploma, which is the Connections courses. Um, these are our art and design courses. The first two that you'll take are going to be in freshman year. They're called graphic design and then live event production. In graphic design, you learn how to use tools that real graphic designers use to come up with logos and 
stylescapes and you build a whole brand and it's a lot of fun using all of the um, Illustrator products that we've got, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. And then in live event production, that one's pretty self-explanatory, you produce a live event. So two years ago in our first year of live event production, our students hosted a conference and they invited educators from across Metro Atlanta and I think a famous actor as well. Did you guys invite Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. He didn't come, sorry, yeah. We're still really upset about it. Um, last year, our students hosted an event called Creating the Cohort, which was a welcome event for eighth grade students coming into ID. And then this year, freshmen cover your ears, we're gonna be hosting a design challenge. Um, so these classes really give our students an opportunity to practice using real world skills. What does it look like to take an art class that has to do with the real world, using skills that real professionals use? What does it look like to put on, host, invite people to, and cover all the logistics for a live event? Spoiler alert, complicated. Um, we've got three students who've taken these classes up here with us. So Trip, Bo, Harris, do any of y'all want to talk a little bit about graphic design and live event production? Not all at once. <laughs> all right, so hi, I'm Bo. I'm in the Walker cohort. That means I'm a junior in ID. Um, so when we took live event production, Harris and I, we were the ones making that conference she was talking about. It was called the Matchbox Conference, and it took place. This was our Mod 4 class, meaning we had had laps, like they were saying, at using these tools we use and managing projects and stuff like that. And so when we got into this class, we were working as students, even, even as freshmen. Wilcox was there to just guide us, but when we got in our team, we were truck, trucking along. Like every, every day we have a stand-up meeting and we get with our teams and we talk about, okay, what did we do yesterday? What are we gonna do today? And how is this gonna help us? We look at all our list of tasks and what we call backlog and we, we get going. Um, so Harris and I, we were in the programming committee. That is, we were in charge of getting the substance. That is, we organized four different sessions, and we organized one keynote panel so that people could really get a sense of how we do things here in ID in Mount Vernon, so that ideally we could spread this to beyond. Because we had a mission statement that is, we want to improve education because that's what's going to improve everything about our society. Uh, my name is Harris Fentress. I am also a junior. And uh, one thing I really want to stress is uh, how like effective the like the learning method is. Uh, for just for an example, uh, when we take the graphic design class, we do it uh, on par or at the same time as the um, live event production. And oh my God, is that like one of the top five most important classes? Like one of the most educational classes I've ever taken. Like I learned so much about like how to make designs that don't suck. Um, like when I go to, <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, when I when I have like my non-ID classes and we got to make a presentation, um, let's just say that they're typically not comparable. And that's not saying that like sorry, that not not to brag, but um, just like the skills we learn, like it contextualizes like your strategic goals of design. Like what are you actually doing? how you can do it, how you can use industry standard tools. Um, and yeah, we use that, like we actually apply that while you take a live event production. And you end up creating like legitimately industry standard quality work um, that you show to the world. Awesome, thanks guys. You have heard all of us talk about real world work. Have you guys heard us say that while you've been in here? Yes, we've yes, that. You have. that was crazy. Thank you so much. We've talked a lot about real world work because we do a lot of real world work. We believe in getting out of the classroom as much as possible and doing really cool stuff. Um, so up here you'll see two pictures. One picture is a bunch of design brief students or upperclassmen uh, on the tarmac at the Atlanta airport talking to people who work for Delta. Um, and that was for a design brief that we did with, spoiler alert, Delta, um, where we got to actually go get on the tarmac, put on the neon vests and interview people who work at Delta in order to get a lot of incredible information. The picture that you'll see on the right, uh, it looks like it's a bunch of kids standing around an ATM in a weird dark room, but it isn't, sort of. This is when we went somewhere called Meow Wolf, which sounds really weird, and I think it sounds weird on purpose. Um, long story short, we took a one-day one field trip to Texas, and it was crazy. Bo, you want to talk about it a little? Yeah, so the three of us here were members of the IDing leadership team. It's about 10% of the program. It's part of our upperclassmen and we're in charge of making the program as, as the best that it can be. And so one thing we really believe is in ID is constantly getting better and constantly improving. And right now, we're working on 
design briefs where we have to design experiences. We're designing the future of air transportation, meaning people are going to walk through here, all sorts of professional people are going to walk through our designs and they're going to see our prototypes. So we need to know how can we fit their needs and how can we fit their user experience. And Meow Wolf are experts on this. They're an art collective and their whole thing is user experience. When you walk in, you're transported to another dimension, both literally and that's the storyline they have. Um, but what we took away from this is we were able to see how can we empathize with our users here and how can we get them to really engage with our work. Awesome. What I took away from it was needing to sleep for four days because it was literally a 22 hour field trip. It was crazy and a lot of fun and just a fun example of the kind of stuff that we get to do in ID. Um, Fanch is going to talk to you a little bit about the upperclassmen experience for design briefs. The first time eighth graders apply, they often say, I want to do this because I want to work with Delta. The work they're talking about is design brief. So I told you about how, by the way, I taught eighth grade for a long time, and I have a sixth sense about when your attention span is about to run out, and I feel it. So we're going to be quick, I promise, if you guys will lean in just for a few more minutes. Um, but the work in design briefs is what we do with grade 11 and grade 12 students, right? And so you have done all this humanities work where you've learned to interview people. One of the main things I always say you'll walk away with is project management. These guys are all great project managers. They're not intimidated to work in groups. They know how to motivate the whole group. You ever been in a group where two people, one person does all the work and some people are sitting there kind of picking their nose and somebody just didn't come and you don't know what's going on? Not really how we do things. Like if it, so if you had your experience with group work, don't shy away because of that. Design briefs in 11th and 12th grade are classes of about between eight and maybe 14 people in a class. So we'll come in with two clients and we'll say, if you want to do this work with Delta, stand over here. If you want to work with IHG, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, whatever it is, here's their problem. We hand them a scope doc which lays out the problem. They pick their sides and then we get out of their way. Everything after that first meeting, by the way, us at Delta, we went three times and once was the second day of school. They got their scope doc, they were ready to go. We hopped in a van, we went down to the global headquarters, which took some doing because it's a high security place, right? So they picked their brief, and then for the next nine weeks, eight really, because their client presentation is on the eighth week, and then they do a case study at the end. They work through the, pro the, the project management steps that they've learned through the years that they've been in ID. We get out of their way. We're there to drive them around in the van or to help them with anything they need. Um, these are not even fully updated with our Mod 1 people. We have some really great clients who always want to work with us again. The problems are varied. We have people who want us, Delta wanted us to put our eyes on their sustainability issues. They're determined to lead in that space. So that was that brief. Brief was huge and ambiguous. Um, and then we have another brief who uh, they're trying to conserve black bears. And they're like, there's a problem with black bears. And they had to learn all about that. So the learning that you do, the reading, the writing, you're going to do all those things. But I always call it, we kind of teach the dichotomy of writing a little bit. When you write a paper, you're going to have to cite your sources, right? You're going to use MLA format. You're, you've taught to state your thesis, back it up, do, do, do. Guess what? I hate to break it to you. Business people don't do that. You don't write them, you don't write them an email where you then state your thesis and back it up. No one will read that. You have to be short and to the point, and that's one of the things we teach is that there's real world or business writing like that, and then there is academic writing. And so we really like our students to know there's a hard deadline and a soft deadline. So all these things in briefs, you really learn. The students do the communicating. You will write the email to your clients. You will set up the meeting. You will lead the meeting. I'll just be over on the side. We might say, hey, but we might not. You are running the show, and that is, what design briefs were meant to be. It's student-led consulting. So you're gonna get a, a prompt and you're gonna take it. Mod 2 is a little different. We always do future of, and I think you heard these guys talk about that a little bit. I wanna make sure you all know. Ready? Yes. 
you are invited to come Monday night between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. and see four classrooms that look nothing like classrooms, I hope. Right now, they look like disaster areas because there's stuff everywhere. We've got airplane seats, we've got wires and saws and wood and everything. We've taken all the dust out. And I want you to come see what it turns into on Monday night, deal? Okay, cool, cool. You're the worst. Um, <laughs> so I know you wanna know now what the ap application process is like. Ready, later today. I'm going to connect it to your Altitude Learning page. You'll get a card from us that says your ID application. Some of you are like, forget it, I hate group work, I hate doing everything you talked about, it's not for me. Totally okay. Submit it and just, there's gonna be a button that says yes or no thank you. Just hit the no thank you button, turn it in so we're not wondering if you're still going to do it. You can talk to your parents about it, but the decision really has to be yours. Um, I, I always hate it when someone says, I didn't know what this was. My mom told me I had to do it. <laughs> so I want you to make that decision for yourself. Talk to your parents about it and discuss it. But don't just do it because someone told you you have to. So after you fill out that application, we're going to interview you. And you'll have a small interview, it's pretty short. The whole process of ID application is to get to know who you are. So if you're genuine with us and you just really tell us who you are, that's what we want. We wanna make a cohort of lots of different types of people. So we're not looking for just the loud people or the people who make straight A's. We don't even look at your grades, guys. We might look at if you get your work turned in because that's important in project work, right? We wanna know if you're someone who's energetic, if you're positive about learning, you get excited and curious. Um, so, there is an extra cost for ID, and that's in our materials too. That goes in, and I'll talk more to your parents about that, but if you get financial aid for school, you also get it for ID in the same amount. Um, we will help you set up your courses if you're selected. We have two rounds of acceptances. Um, after we do some activities and we really feel like we've gotten to know you, we will let in one round of people. It's usually around 20 people. And then the rest are on a waiting list. It's a true waiting list. There should be no tears or sadness. What we do is we have to wait until all the applications from outside of ID, I mean, sorry, outside of Mount Vernon have gotten their acceptances and decided to come. And then that second round, we kind of fill out the cohort and figure out how many we're gonna be able to have and who is that going to be until we have this cohort that as people that the program's really right for as best we can, right? Does that make sense? Then you will start your onboarding with some advising about your classes. And that's pretty much it. And you can always ask us questions as we go too. Now we are going to hear a little bit more from our ID students. They're gonna be quick because you're yawning and laying, which is fine. <laughs> We've been talking at you for a very long time. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to them and you're gonna hear from them some things that have maybe surprised them about ID and, and maybe some of the things that they really love about ID as well. Hi, I'm Jalen. Um, okay, we're gonna keep it cute, keep it sweet. Anyways, so um, basically, <laughs> so one of the things I like, well, love most about ID is when, we're, when Ms. Wilcox touched on it earlier but with multidisciplinary learning, um, I love how it's not just like the learning in which you get the multidisciplinary from, but like the people that you're learning from. Like my classmates have been the second like most like insightful people. And it's because like we all come from, at least in the Jorgen co cohort, I know we there's a bunch of different personalities, a bunch of different backgrounds. And so when I'm in these classes with these people, it's like, I'm not only learning the act from the actual class, but I'm actually learning from other people, which I think you can take into account like when you go out into the real world because you're gonna have to work with um, people that you might not like, people that you may like, but and just have to like use your pro, well not pros, advantages in order to like make something that's meaningful. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, so when I was applying for ID, I was a little bit hesitant because I used to really not like group work in middle school because people, like, wouldn't pull their weight, and it felt like I would have to, like, do all the work. But in ID, it's totally different, and it surprised me because a lot of the projects we work on, we get to choose the subject of it, so people are actually interested. And when people are actually interested in the work they're doing, they're, like, willing to do it and do it well. So it's really cool to, like, see how well and like fun group projects can be if everyone is pulling their weight in it and I really enjoy it. So don't be hesitant because of that because in ID people pull their weight. <laughs> and also to Ali's point, you also pull your weight because you're interested in your project and you're interested in your peers because you can trust your teammates. Like if I say, oh yeah, I'm not gonna be here for the last 10 minutes of my design brief period because I'm going to talk to eighth graders, I can trust that my teammates are going to keep working and they're gonna keep going because we have built that relationship. Bouncing off of that, um, probably my favorite part of ID is everyone in your group gets to tap into their creative sides. Like if someone's not good at this, someone else is good at this, and it's all uh, basically revolved around communicating, and I really like that. Um, to add on to that, uh, I agree the exact same thing as what Johnny just said. And also I feel like at no point in ID are we doing work that – that we can't apply to the real world. Like, I feel like sometimes in middle school, sometimes in other classes, uh, we can write papers and stuff like what Abraham Lincoln's grandfather's son did on the 23rd day of July. And you're just like, why am I writing this? Like, why do I care about this? And I feel like the work that we do in ID, um, you can all, you can apply it to your life and not just like your life when you get older, but your everyday life starting now. Like I brought up earlier about like speaking in front of people, how I'm speaking in front of all of you guys. And uh, also, like, learning how to debate and learning how to how to get your point across and also learning how to work in a group and build relationships with people that you probably have, like, never would talk to outside ID because I know I have, some, I have some friends, like, in my social life, and then I have ID friends. And it's, it's cool to, to bring ID friends into your social life, especially, like, you don't know about a person until you really work with them because there, there have been some times where I'm in a group with people and if I didn't, like, work with them, I really would not care or, like, even think about them in my mind. And so it's, it's good to, to build relationships with people so you can, you can like, watch them grow, especially because um, earlier, as they were talking about, ID is a four-year period. So we kind of all watch each other grow, like, from freshman year, and it's cool to see uh, the growth of everyone. So, yeah. So I've been told to keep it short, so I'm just going to say one thing. <laughs> uh, there is one skill that no matter how involved you are in the program, you will take away when you graduate from ID. And that is the ability to reach out to people who you might see as like important researchers, CEOs, uh, you know, like f future bosses. Uh, you will have no problem talking to these people and reaching out to them, emailing them, you know, asking them to meet with them. Uh, because that's what we do every day in ID. We constantly like send emails to like researchers to ask for interviews. We constantly, I mean, like literally every day, talk to like well, not literally every, but like daily talk to CEOs from businesses like Delta, Home Depot, uh, smaller businesses. Like these are the people you will be interacting with, and these are people you will be comfortable interacting with. And parents, uh, you guys probably will appreciate this because your kids will be able to do very well in the world with this skill, which is something that not a lot of people have. Um, with uh, at this age, um, it's an extremely valuable competitive advantage that you will have going into the real world. Hey everybody, I'm Sydney. I'm a senior, so I've had a lot of experience in ID all four years, and I started just where you guys are. Um, I think my favorite part of ID is the connections and the opportunities that it allows for you. Um, I know coming in as a freshman, that was during COVID, and it was a different experience than I'd ever experienced in school before. I was at Mount Vernon since seventh grade and I came from a traditional public school. So it was very different than anything I'd ever seen and ever thought I would be doing in high school. I've had the amazing opportunities to take a one day field trip to Texas like Ms. Wilcox talked about. I've worked with companies like Mercedes and I was lucky enough to be on the Delta Brief last mod like Ms. Fancher brought up. Um, it was an awesome experience and it's definitely a little daunting at first. You're 17, 18 years old, and the CEO of sustainability at Delta is coming with to you and saying, can you solve this problem of reaching our sustainability goal of net zero by 2050? And that is a massive goal, if you guys didn't know. Um, and being 17, 18, our group was like, yep, we got it, don't worry. 
and we presented to them at the end of the mod with around 23 ideas that we designed in an idea catalog. And the thing that we love to hear is, wow, I didn't think students could do this type of work, and we've never thought of that idea before. And then we recently received an email saying that they immediately took them to their designers and wanted to start implementing those ideas at Delta. And I think that's just one of my favorite things, is having that impact on companies that didn't expect the type of work from us, and now having the opportunities to say that I did and was able to work with Delta and have so many other opportunities going out into the real world next year. We are running close, we're running into your PE time, and I know you guys are tired of hearing us. The interesting thing is sitting and listening is really not part of the ID program. We, you'll find we're very interactive in the things we do. We don't do a ton of sit and get, except in the first few minutes of class, maybe for a mini lesson. But let's take two quick questions. Who's brave and gonna stick their hand up and ask a question? What you got? So that's a great question. He asked about financial aid. So the percentage of financial aid that a student gets on your regular tuition is the same percentage of fa financial aid that you get on your ID tuition, and that is something, too, that you can discuss with the business office as well. We don't do a lot with that, but that's exactly how it works. So you need to know that. That's an important point. Good question. Yeah. What'd you say? Such a good question, and all of your parents are wondering that. She asked about college. Um, when, it, when I first started working in this program, this program is why I came to Mount Vernon, one of the first things I started hearing mostly from parents was like, what do colleges think of this? This is weird, right? So there are two things I want you to know, right? When you graduate from ID, you have a very different story to tell. You heard Sydney was just talking about how she worked with Delta. She's, that's just one project of the many that she's worked on. She has a different high school experience to tell her on her college applications. Not only can she write eloquently about the things she's done, she can also speak, as you saw all these kids can, about the work they've done and the value that it's given them. So over the years, we have found that colleges eat this up. They're not looking at the same thing. You get a separate transcript. People always say, is there a diploma, an innovation diploma? By the way, it's ID or innovation diploma. I heard someone recently say I diploma, not a thing. There's another I diploma that's in California and they don't like us saying that and we don't like it anyway. So just, yeah, and you'll see that on your application. But you have a separate diploma. When you get your diploma, when you graduate, you'll have the Mount Vernon one on top, the ID ones on the bottom, the little booklet that you get. But also you have a separate transcript that is attached. It's really a transcript page attached to your transcript. And in it is a little bit about you, but it's mostly about all the work you've done and your role. I was project manager with Delta. I did this. I was lead uh, researcher. I, you know, I did, uh, for those of you who really love art and design, there's always a need for that in projects. You know, I made logos. I did branding. I did style, stylescapes, all of those things. Um, yeah, we better, real quick. Great question. I love that question. Is the IT program just like business? Such a good question. I, I get that question all the time, but it's, is the IT program just like blank? A lot of people say, is it just engineering? Is it for engineering kids? Is it just business? Is it math science? What about arts kids? What about people, is it gonna cut into my athletics? Great question. It is not just about business. But I will tell you that the things you learn will cross over into anything you want to do. We always say, I, got, I stole this from Wilcox, life is a group project, guys. So the things that you learn in ID will help you with literally everything. And project management is a big part of a lot of businesses. But if you know how to do it, we um, heard from a couple of our last year seniors that went on to college and they wrote us about how their presentation skills and their project management skills are so far above the other freshmen that they're working with that they're just now learning this stuff, and they felt kind of, you know. One of our one of our kids sent us a picture of like the lecturer at college teaching him something, and said, "Oh my God, I already know this," and we were like, "Oh." <laughs>
Yeah. All right, listen, we've cut into your PE time, so here's what I want you to do. We will continue to answer questions. Like I said, we're going to be able to talk to each of you and get to know you. But right now, what I want you guys to do is stand up and head out to PE, and then we're going to keep your parents here for a couple of minutes. Thanks so much for coming, guys. We're excited to talk to you. Stretch. File out quickly. I would have said, but the majority of...